Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular video, I am going to talk to you about AWS ECS, Elastic Container Service. And we will try to understand what ECS is in very simple terms. Okay, there will be upcoming videos where I will show you demo of the same and then we'll get into uh, details of each and every concept of ECS. But in this video, what I want to make sure is that you understand that what ECS is, that you are able to visualize how does the service work. We will also compare the two models which are supported in ECS, which are EC2 hosted model and Fargate. We'll understand the comparison between the two as well. So what are container orchestration tools? Orchestration tools help us to deploy, manage, and scale our containers, right? And, you know, these tools take away all these headache from us so that we don't have to go and manually get into all these tasks. There are many orchestration tools, for example, ECS, Kubernetes, Docker Swarm, Mesos, etc. Right? So, what, what do they actually do? They start, stop, monitor, all these n number of containers which are running on so many hosts. What, what is a host here? What are we talking as a host here? A host is nothing but a server. It could be a physical server or it could be a virtual machine as well. Now we are talking in the context of AWS, ECS, so we will restrict our discussion to a virtual machine. So basically, your EC2 instance all of you understand what is an EC2 instance is. So your EC2 instance is considered or called a host here. Okay. And on your host, there can be n number of containers which could be running. And container orchestration service, which is ECS in this case, manages, decides, monitors that which container should be running on which EC2 instance or which host. Right. Uh, and of course, starting, stopping, all of such things. So as you can see here on the left hand side in this picture, you know, this particular vertical, you can consider it as one host or one EC2 instance, right? So as you can see here, here you can see there are three hosts available and container orchestration service kind of oversees or, or looks at all the available hosts, three in this case, and then it decides that where should the next container be placed. Okay. So the first model is the bare metal model where you have got a physical server or a physical host, right? And on that operating system is installed complete physical resources of that particular host or physical box is available to that one operating system. On that, you can go ahead and install whatever you want, whatever dependent libraries you want, any applications you want, you can go ahead and install there. Now, as we move forward, we got into virtual machine concept. So what did we do in virtual machine? On one physical host or on one physical box, first a layer of hypervisor gets installed, right? So what is the work of this hypervisor? This hypervisor will have access to all the physical resources uh, you know, available with this physical host, which means complete CPU and RAM. And above this hypervisor level, you will have multiple virtual machines installed. So as you can see, this first vertical thing, then second vertical thing, and then third, these are like three virtual machines hosted on one physical box. Okay. And of course, for every virtual machine, there would be one, one guest operating system. Okay, so what is the work of hypervisor here? Hypervisor ensures that based on the size of the individual VM, every VM gets the prescribed access to CPU and RAM. That's the work of hypervisor. Now, when we come to containers, it goes one level further. What happens is you can go ahead and actually uh, need not run a guest operating system for every application. Rather, what can happen is on one guest operating system, what is guest operating system here? You can just think it as your Linux, right? Amazon Linux or RHEL, just like that. So on one guest operating system, there can be smaller packages 
which are called containers and in every package necessary libraries and the application code can be put okay so whatever you are seeing here in the third third picture on the right hand side this particular thing is one container so all of this you know became possible with uh, you know with the help of docker so let's read this docker provides the ability to package and run an application in a loosely isolated environment called a container that's what docker helps you to do the isolation and security allow you to run many containers simultaneously on a given host that's what we were talking now please try and understand here when we say one guest os or docker engine this is like one server or one virtual machine in our case in in case we are talking about aws ecs think of this particular thing as one virtual machine one ec2 instance and on that one ec2 instance you have like three containers running as per this diagram containers are lightweight because they don't need the extra load of a hypervisor but run directly with the host machines kernel which means in this case please do not get confused here the host is being referred as this particular thing as your ec2 instance this means you can run more containers on a given hardware combination than if you were using virtual machines so uh, that's where now containers are becoming popular for a given hardware sizing you will end up running more applications or it would it would lead to better utilization of hardware uh, infrastructure with containers in comparison to virtual machines now please see here you can even run docker containers within host machines that are actually virtual machines that's why i was explaining you this thing that here this particular horizontal which you are saying which is written as guest os or docker engine that is a virtual machine okay so uh, i hope you 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 get an understanding of it so all of you those who understand ec2 already it is very simple think it like this guys till now you were creating one ec2 instance and on that ec2 instance you were deploying your application right you are installing any dependent libraries for your application and then you are installing the application or basically deploying the application now with container coming into picture what can happen is your same ec2 instance can have multiple containers on it and every container is like an isolated environment you can think okay so all of let's say you have got three containers on your ec2 instance so every container uses the kernel of your operating system operating system of your ec2 instance okay but as such every container gives a completely independent or isolated environment for your application to run okay so that's the beauty of containers so in the context of aws you have following services available ecr elastic container registry which is basically the image registry right uh, this is the place where you can go ahead and store all your different container images you can think like how we used to have amis right for our ec2 instances so an ami used to act as the base to create an ec2 instance in the same way for containers also you can have an image or it's basically a, a file which explains that what all should get created as the base image so you can go ahead and basically store all of that in ecr then you have amazon ecs and amazon eks ecs is orchestration tool if you want to use kubernetes then you have eks available as well when you want to use ecs or eks you have two models available right anyway you are going to run containers but the point is where do these containers get placed so there are two models ec2 hosted model and fargate model right so let's understand what is the difference between the two we are going to first talk about ecs uh, ecs is really easy to use because you can go ahead and very quickly get started have your containers up and running and in addition to that you have a very tight integration with the complete aws platform which means many of the aws services are very properly linked with ecs so you can go ahead and basically create your containers and put it behind load balancer 
easily. You can enable IAM roles for your containers. You can push the logs which are getting generated in your container. Let's say you are running some application in your container. The logs which are getting generated, you can push it to CloudWatch logs. There will be multiple metrics which are available. You can use CloudWatch events to basically um, schedule, you know, schedule the execution of your containers or basically creation of your containers that is also possible. So it's a very tight integration and all the events which happen uh, for ECS, the, the management events which happen, everything can be logged using CloudTrail service. Now you can go ahead and create really big clusters and uh, you might be thinking what a cluster is. So a cluster is nothing but collection of multiple EC2 instances. So as I was telling you that Amazon ECS has got two models, EC2 hosted and Fargate. So first we are talking about EC2 hosted model. So in EC2 hosted model, what happens is you go ahead and you basically create a cluster. So a cluster is nothing but a collection of EC2 instances. So I might go ahead and say create a cluster in which I should have three EC2 instances. Okay, so three EC2 instances of the size which I want to specify. Maybe I will just say it should be M4 large, three instances. So three instances come up and those three instances would be part of my cluster. I, go ahead, I may go ahead and give some name to my cluster. So once this cluster is created, I would go ahead and actually try to run containers on the nodes of this cluster or basically containers on the EC2 instances. Now, in order to you know create all this container and delete it and manage it, how would ECS as a service do it? In order to do it, what happens is in all these EC2 instances, there will be an ECS agent install. Okay, so if you you know as we look at our upcoming tutorials, we'll see that there are both the options available. You might pick up an image or AMI for your EC2 instance, which will have ECS agent installed already. Or you may also go ahead and install it manually later on. Okay, so both the ways it's possible. The point is ECS agent should be there on the EC2 instance. Then only all the different actions would become possible by the ECS service, right? So the point here is that in case of EC2 hosted model, you will be able to see the EC2 instances on which your containers are running. And uh, you know, if you'll go to your EC2 dashboard, you'll be able to see all those EC2 instances. And in a way, it becomes customer's responsibility to basically manage those EC2 instances. What, what management are we talking about? For example, if any patch has to be applied on the operating system of those EC2 instances. That is customer's responsibility, right? Of course, creation of containers, deletion of containers, all of that ECS service would do. But as such for those EC2 instances, you when you know you have to manage or put anything at the OS level, that is your responsibility. As usual, customers did not want to manage that as well. And hence, the request came for a more managed service. And that is where Fargate came into picture. Once you go ahead and adapt the Fargate model, what happens is you don't see any EC2 instances. EC2 instances won't be visible in your EC2 dashboard. Basically, you become free from managing the instances altogether. All you have to do is you have to just say what would be the size of your container, right? Maybe you will specify that it should have this much CPU available, this much memory available and things like that. And just with that definition, your container gets created. You don't have to get into managing any EC2 instances at all. That's the Fargate model, right? So what's, what's the benefit? Of course, no infrastructure to manage. You can go ahead and launch quickly. And of course, in terms of scaling, this also scales. You can manage EC2 hosted model as well. We'll talk about it, how to scale it. And here the pricing would be based on every container level, right? Of course, a more managed service, simply to say. The question comes that which model should I go ahead with? Should I go with EC2 hosted model or the Fargate model? Of course, it depends on the type of workload which you are going to run. Uh, you know, there is no single rule with which you can always decide. First, in terms of cost, if you want to run the same size of 
containers and you go ahead and do the cost calculation, you will find that EC2 hosted model would be cheaper, whereas Fargate model would be costlier. Why is it so? Because of course, in that case, the whole management is automated and hence the cost would be slightly higher. But then you do not have to get into managing any instances. Whereas in case of EC2 hosted model, you need to take care of management of EC2 instances. Then pose this, what are those, you know, what would be the quality of uh, the processes or the tasks which, which I should look at to decide between the two? If, you know, your tasks are more predictable and long running, you know that how much uh, resource utilization is required and your tasks are such that they will be running really long time uh, you know utilization is a lot and it is predictable then you should go ahead with ec2 hosted model on the other hand if your tasks are in such a way that you know it doesn't run for very long and also the resource utilization is a bit variable then you can go ahead with the fargate model I mean, those are general guidelines. Of course, you should always do the calculation and decide, but those guidelines should help you, right? So I hope that gives you a basic understanding of how ECS service works, right? What containers are in simple terms. I have not tried to make this very complex. In the upcoming video, what we'll do is we'll go ahead and try to create ECS cluster and then we'll go ahead and create tasks in that. We'll run all of this. We'll talk about uh, different type of networking models which are available. And then, you know, of course, all of this with a demo. So I hope you subscribe to the channel and press the bell icon so that you get notified when the next video comes up. Thanks for your time. Please share it with your friends if this video helped you. Thank you.